Hi there, this is Amy Starnes, the Director of Digital Engagement with Best Friends Animal Society, here today to talk about growing revenue with monthly giving. We're going to focus today on how to grow your monthly giving program through digital channels. Digital is one of the areas where monthly giving is growing the fastest and is the most accessible and easy to use for donors and an area that is really scalable for a lot of organizations who already have online giving programs and are looking to increase the revenue that you bring in. And I feel like in digital, a lot of times it's really helpful to look at some benchmarks to have an understanding of what's going on in the industry and what you can expect in terms of your giving programs. These benchmarks that I'm showing you here are from the MNR Benchmarks 2019 study. And if you go to mnrbenchmarks.com, you'll see yearly studies that MNR produces that are the culmination of organizations of all different sizes and verticals and show what benchmarks look like for all kinds of great metrics online. They're a great resource. They're free for nonprofits. I highly encourage you to bookmark them and reference them from time to time to see how your own program compares. So some of the key metrics from 2018 include these six bullet points that I've listed out here. Online revenue increased by just 1% in 2018. And that's a pretty strict departure from what we've seen in online giving really since the advent of it. Uh, One-time revenue actually decreased by 3%, and that's new. Usually when we look at digital fundraising, we expect to see double-digit increases. So there are some shifts that we have seen in 2018 in terms of the overall market and how people are choosing to give online. But the biggest takeaway here is that monthly revenue, despite all of these things, has increased by 14%. So when you're thinking about where to spend your time, your dollars, uh, your effort, monthly giving is really the place that we're seeing growth in online fundraising. A couple more things that I think are helpful email drove 13% of all online revenue, which is down from 28%. So email is still a very important part of your program, but it's becoming harder to compete in the space. And so all the more important for us to stay really relevant in our email communications. And we're gonna talk about email as part of your sustainer program because it's a key part of it if you're gonna be bringing sustainers into your digital program. And on average, 37% of donors who made an online gift in 2017 also made one in 2018. That's a strong number. And we're going to talk about retention when it comes to sustainers as well, because that's one of the best benefits to having a strong sustainer base is increased retention for your online givers. And then overall, just 1% of your website visitors donated. So that's sometimes a number that I think is surprising to people. That's such a low percentage of the people who come to your site are actually making a donation. But I think that what that means is that you've got a lot of opportunities to try to convert people to donations and to think about how you're portraying monthly giving on your website in addition to one-time giving. So we're going to spend some time today talking about what you want to do to build a monthly giving program and how you wanna to continue to grow that if that's something that you've already started or and are looking for some next steps. So one of the reasons why we're focused on monthly giving is because we have a culture of monthly subscriptions. When you think about all the monthly subscriptions that are available and becoming more and more common these days, you realize that most of them are using your credit card or your EFT, your direct funds transfer. And those are things that people are becoming more and more comfortable with. 10 years ago, monthly giving and monthly um, you know, programs like Netflix and Hulu uh, weren't a part of our culture. But now people of all generations are more and more comfortable with the idea of giving their credit card information or linking directly to their banking account to make monthly transactions. So as part of that, this is a great reason why monthly giving is becoming more and more a part of our culture. And one of the great things about what it means for donors is that monthly giving means more impact. When you think about giving the benefits of giving every single month, as opposed to a single gift throughout the year, you're able to make a difference all throughout the year. And that's something that donors find very rewarding. And all the more important why we need to steward those donors all throughout the year to tell them how much we appreciate their continued support. Retention is one of the best benefits of a strong online monthly giving base. 
So it is five times cheaper to retain a donor than to acquire a new one. That's something that I think we forget thinking about new donors, but it is so much more valuable to us to keep an existing donor on our file and continue to have them support our organization than to go out and find a brand new one. And your average monthly donor gives 45% more than your average one-time donor throughout the course of the year. So when you think about the benefits of bringing on a sustaining donor uh, and keeping that sustaining donor on your file, it's, it's a really valuable proposition. Just to note, by the way, monthly donor and sustaining donor are often used interchangeably. So I'll be using those terms interchangeably as well. So how does monthly giving drive more revenue? One of the best things about monthly donors is that they provide a predictable stream of revenue that can really help drive big impact. So here are a couple of example scenarios that I think are helpful in illustrating what this might look like. Imagine you have 10 monthly donors. We're supposing an average gift of $19, which is pretty on par for industry average for an online monthly gift. And that equals $190 in monthly revenue. We're imagining that those donors are staying on for an average of eight months out of the year. And that's pretty average. The reason for eight months is that sometimes there are people who will come on at different points throughout the year. And there are also people who will drop off of a monthly giving program uh, at certain points in the year. So we average about eight just to you know, give a place to start. You'll likely develop your own benchmarks and see if that number is a little bit higher or a little bit lower for you. So you know, we're talking about uh, an additional $1,520 in yearly revenue. And obviously you can see how that increments up with 100 monthly donors, with 1,000 monthly donors. Imagine what would happen if we had 10,000 monthly donors. So you can see that that revenue, once you get those folks into the program and steward them to continue to stay on the file, can really help you to drive predictable revenue that can allow you to fund the work that you're doing in a more predictable way. So a lot of organizations will name their monthly giving program. And that's something that I would encourage you to think about doing. Not every organization does this, but there are a lot of benefits to labeling a monthly giving program. And you'll notice that a lot of monthly giving programs have similar types of names that evoke a sense of membership, of belonging, of exclusivity. Uh, we wanna make sure that these monthly donors feel like they're a part of something and that they feel special and that they feel important because they are. These are folks who are helping you all year round to fund your mission. So by naming your group, you have a way to always personalize the content that you're sharing toward them by referring to them as their particular group name and an opportunity to provide benefits and access. So in the example below, you'll see that this organization has called their monthly giving program Wildlife Guardians. And you can see that Wildlife Guardians are a group of dedicated members who make monthly gifts that make a big impact. And that these monthly donors receive special privileges each month, including free subscriptions, uh, personalized labels, calendars, all things that are within your organization's decisions about how you choose to steward and you know, provide benefits or access for your particular donors. But it provides some you know, kind of insider feel and is something that can be really powerful. If you do decide to name your monthly giving program, keep in mind that you wanna use that name consistently and use it anytime you can when you're speaking to your monthly donor audience. So for example, an email, if you're sending an email to your broader donor audiences, you'll wanna customize a version for your monthly donors to acknowledge them as the monthly donors that they are. It's something that really helps with stewardship, really helps to create a meaningful experience for your donors and really helps them to be recognized and feel valued for their monthly giving. Now, speaking about monthly giving, uh, we wanna take a look at monthly donation forms. You have the option through your digital fundraising platforms to add monthly giving to probably any of your forms. Uh, you'll have to take a look at your system to see exactly how to do this, but you can see that on this form, you have both a monthly and a one-time checkbox, and that's pretty standard. So we encourage you to take a look at your forms and see where you can add in that monthly checkbox. 
in this form, this is a beautiful example of a monthly giving form. You can see that the monthly giving option is pre-selected. So that's the one that we've already nudged someone toward giving a monthly gift for, but they can give a one-time gift as well. And it's nice to have both options. Someone might be interested in giving a monthly gift, uh, but they might decide actually at this moment, I just wanna do one time. They might be coming to give a one-time gift and they might see a monthly option and say, oh, well actually maybe that's something that I could do as well. So you have that option on your donation forms and I encourage you to look at places where you can add that in. Uh, we tend to add a monthly checkbox on our campaign donation forms, even when we're asking for one-time gifts. And a lot of times that will result in a few extra monthly donors, which is wonderful. We're always excited to have more monthly donors who are interested in supporting the cause. So you can take a look at your forms and see where you can add this in. One thing that I do wanna be clear about is it's very important to your donors that it be very clear that they are making a monthly gift anytime you have a form where you might have both or where someone's making a monthly donation. So if you feel like it might be something that people could get confused about, look at some of the helper language to see if you can make it clear that someone is making a monthly gift. You'll see in the red language down below on this form, it says you have selected to make a gift of $15 a month. So it's just another place to remind the donor Yes, you're actually making a monthly uh, gift in this place and not a one-time gift. And we'll cut down on calls to your donor services team and help to make sure that people get enrolled in the program that they wish to get enrolled in. Here's another example. This is actually just a, a snippet from a donation form that shows the checkbox that you can often add in on a standard donation form. So this form, for example, defaults to one-time giving and there's a checkbox that says, make this a monthly donation. So like I said, take a look at all of your donation forms, see where you can add in that monthly checkbox. If it brings you in an extra one, two, 10 monthly donors, that's a fantastic thing. And it takes very little effort on your part to be able to put that in. So let's talk a little bit about what it looks like if you're going to create a monthly giving campaign. There are a couple of options that you have. You can reach out to your existing file and ask them to become monthly donors. You can ask your existing monthly donors to make an upgrade gift. The first one's a lot easier than the second one. So here's an example uh, from an organization who has done a lot of very smart things in this monthly giving appeal. You don't have to do them all. You can think about doing them in different places and different times, but there's a lot of things here that are good suggestions on how to bring in monthly donors. So you can see this organization has called their monthly donor, the donor program, the Champion Circle. And you can see that the individual who's received this is being invited to join the Champion Circle, which is a special group of dedicated monthly donors who support animals, much like Riptide, the dog featured above. So that's great. We're asking people to join a special group. Um, there is the next line here that says, if you're already a member, thank you. Now, in an ideal world, you wouldn't be sending this email to anyone who is already a monthly donor. Ideally, you would have segmented out your monthly donors, but that said, it never hurts to put this language in there because if there is a reason why someone has not fallen into that segment, if there is a overlap in the time that you sent this and the last time that you pulled the query, you don't wanna upset anybody. So it really doesn't hurt to put that in there, uh, even as a PS, um, just to make sure that you're covering any possible folks who might fall through the cracks and uh, might not have been addressed appropriately in the moment. So you can see that this organization has listed out a bunch of reasons about why monthly giving matters, uh, talking about the importance of monthly support, which is great, talking about how it's convenient, affordable, and efficient. These are all great points around monthly giving and why it's so helpful. Uh, people can set it you know, once and then have their gift processed every month without any effort on their part. You can create a bigger impact for the animals. Then you can see, this is actually an email, by the way, that I cut in half so that you could better read the text. And then the second part of the email, you can see what your gift means to the animals. This is a great thing for you to build out into your monthly giving program as well. Equivalencies of what your gift can do. So you could think about $10 a month, $25 a month, $50 a month, common amounts that you might expect to see to help drive more impact around those amounts. Now keep in mind, $25 a month can provide a shelter dog with behavior and enrichment training. That's language that you can use to make 
make sure that your gift remains unrestricted and is talking about what the impact of your giving can be. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you're sensitive to that language to illustrate that this is the sort of impact your gift can have, not exactly what it is doing every month. And then there's a great example here from a Champion Circle member and volunteer talking about their feelings about joining the program and how it's impactful for them. These kinds of social proof examples can be really fantastic in helping people to see themselves in a monthly giving program and to understand why other folks with similar values to theirs appreciate being a part of this. And then very easy ways to reach out and make your gift. You can use a secure online form. You can call someone. Um, and there's a, also a button down below. Uh, there's an incentive here uh, to receive a calendar. So lots of great things here. Use this as an example to think about building out your own monthly giving ask. You could think about doing one or two, maybe even three emails over the course of a couple of weeks to your list. And you could think about bringing this in as a part of your regular program uh, to you know, help bring those people who have never given a gift who are on your email list or who have given a one-time gift and might be a good prospect to become a monthly donor to bring those into your program. So as I said, maybe try maybe two times a year uh, to have a monthly giving campaign, up to three messages. Highlight the impact of monthly giving. Remember, donors are all about impact. We want them to understand what their gift can do. And you have a lot of opportunities with monthly giving to talk about what your gift could do every month or what it can cumulatively do over the course of a year. Use your program name and you can include a suggested ask. Now, this might be something where you want to feel it out a little bit at first um, and see what your average monthly gift starts to look like. But a lot of monthly giving programs tend to be around 18 to 21 dollars as an average gift. That tends to be what we see. So you could think about including a monthly ask in one of those areas and see how that works. You could test that a couple of times a year to see what the impact of an $18 ask versus a $21 ask looks like. You could test that within your own campaign. So there's a lot of opportunities there to see where your donors are most apt to give and to try to identify what that right place is for them to reach out and make that monthly gift. Now, you can also create an upgrade campaign for your existing monthly donors, like I mentioned earlier. This is a communication where you could put together an email, maybe one to three emails, and calculate a small percentage increase of their existing gift and highlight the impact of what that additional donation could do. So if I'm giving $20 a month, maybe you would ask me to give $22 a month to help save even more lives, to help fund this program, you know, to help drive forward more impact. Uh, this can be a little bit trickier on the back end. A lot of monthly giving programs will not necessarily let you update the gift that already exists in your system, and this might require you to create a new gift and cancel the old one. So if you're going to build out an upgrade program, I highly recommend that you go through the technology, see what your options are, and fully understand what the impact of an upgrade would look like and what the process would be in order to make that upgrade possible. So spend some extra time looking at this and figure out what's feasible within your own technology system. Upgrades can be fantastic, but you want to make sure you can deliver on them in the back end. Stewarding monthly donors is incredibly important. These are people who are giving to you all year round. And so you want to make sure that they feel special and that they know that you know who they are. So here's an example of a email that Best Friends sent to all of our donors at the holidays for the for Thanksgiving. And what we did is we made sure that uh, at a few different places in um, the communication that we customized it for monthly donors. So we wanted to make sure that they received this message and we don't have the subject line included here, but we do say as a guardian angel, um, you know, thank you for all of your support this year. So look at those opportunities to steward, to reach out, to share impact and to customize language for your monthly donors. A lot of times, once you have a group of monthly donors, there tends to be a little bit of concern about asking a monthly donor for an additional one-time gift. 
most organizations will agree that this is something that you can do as long as you're being thoughtful about it. And you thoughtful really is the key here. So if you have a monthly donor cohort, you're stewarding them as monthly donors, you probably don't want them to receive every one-time appeal that you send out. And if you do have them receive a one-time appeal, you wanna make sure that you acknowledge their monthly donor status so that you recognize you are asking them to do something above and beyond. So some ideas of where it might be appropriate to ask a monthly donor for an extra one-time gift would be at the holidays, maybe for your Giving Tuesday campaign, which might be an important time where you're trying to bring in one-time gifts on that particular day, maybe for a special gift for a restricted campaign, a particular project that you're working on where a monthly donor might feel that they want to, want to contribute to that as well. And in honor of, for gift giving, or a different type of gift that would feel a little bit different and might serve a different purpose for that donor. So possibly as a, you know, honor gift for a birthday, uh, for, you know, a symbolic giving program, something like that. Regardless, always make sure that if you're asking one of your monthly donors for a one-time gift, you're acknowledging that they're a monthly donor, that you're so grateful for their support, and it would mean so much to the animals if you were to make this additional gift in this one particular situation. Now, as we talked about, there are two ways to bring on monthly donors. You can acquire as monthly, which means this is someone who has never given a gift to your organization before, and they'll be coming in with their first gift being a monthly gift, and you can upgrade one-time donors to monthly donors. So both of these are effective strategies, and I would encourage you to think about if you can make both of these parts of your program. So acquiring as monthly might mean that you are making asks on social media, that you're putting predominant monthly giving places on your website so new visitors to your site can see that as an opportunity to get involved in what you are doing, and sending emails to people on your list who have never made a gift. So that is one track you can think about in terms of bringing on sustainers. And then upgrading one-time donors to monthly donors. If you can identify on your list anyone who is giving you three or more gifts per year already, they are perfect for a monthly ask. Those people are just waiting for you to ask them to become monthly donors. So you could think about targeting them specifically, or you can think about targeting people who have given a one-time gift in the past year, um, there are different time periods you can try out uh, around when that person gave their one-time gift, whether you ask them in the next 30 to 60 days, some organizations have success with that, if you ask them after a six-month period, if you ask them around their anniversary. So there's a lot of different opportunities for you to try different asks to encourage people to take that next level of commitment to your organization and become a monthly donor. But don't think that it's either or. You can use both of these strategies to help grow your monthly giving program. You might find that one is more effective than the other for you, but definitely keep them both in mind. And it's really important to measure your results. I know that we are all incredibly busy, and this can be the first thing that goes when we're working to raise more and more money, but it's really important for monthly donors to measure your results. And you don't need to have a ton of technology, you know, in order to do this. Your digital fundraising program will have some level of reporting that it will allow for you to query. And you might just create an Excel spreadsheet, track your total revenue through your monthly giving program, your total gifts, uh, your average gift, and your conversion rate on your donation forms and your overall website. Now, conversion rate is a little bit of a tricky one. So what you'll need in order to calculate your conversion rate is a Google Analytics account, which is free and something that you can easily set up on your website. Google Analytics will tell you the traffic to each one of your individual pages and your cumulative pages on your site, and it will also track your revenue on your forms. So conversion rate for your donation forms will tell you how many people on your monthly giving form visited and how many of them actually donated. A lot of people are surprised to hear that the average conversion on a donation form is about 17%. But again, this means that there's a lot of opportunity to give people what they're really looking for and to try to drive up that conversion rate to encourage people to make the donation. So if you track these numbers, that'll really help you to get a baseline for your program and figure out 
what revenue you can expect, how many gifts that you're seeing, what your average gift looks like, how many people are donating on your forms, and that will give you opportunities to try to improve on those results. So if your average gift is $21, you might decide next year, your focus is gonna to be to try to get your average gift up to $25. And that means bringing in monthly donors at a higher rate or helping to upgrade your existing donors. So you can think about all of these as different ways to track your results and continue to show improvement on your program over time. So it's time to get started. You could do this. I know that there are a lot of things that we are all trying to do in our programs, but monthly giving is absolutely worth the time to set up the program and to develop a stewardship program throughout the course of the year to help your monthly donors feel valued, to continue to give gifts to your organization, and to continue to help you fund your work. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much.